If it's a question that's going to make people uncomfortable, sometimes that's a sign that it's the one that you should be asking. So this idea that teenagers were not following the guidance, were having house parties, were meeting up, were congregating on, on street corners, that sort of took hold in the public consciousness. But in reality, actually, when you ask the question, what's really going on here? And when you looked beyond the outrage and the hysteria, they were maybe being slightly less compliant than other populations, but they were paying a much higher price in terms of the impact on their mental health and their happiness levels. In fact, there was research to show that teenagers, young adults were amongst the most empathetic cohorts in that they recognised that there was very little risk to themselves from COVID, but they were absolutely terrified of bringing it home and passing it on to a more vulnerable family member. But very few people were going to them and asking them how this was impacting on them. And one moment I think that will always stay with me is a little boy of about 11 in, in sixth class in St. Odians who turned to me and he said, during lockdown, I think my self-esteem really went down because I missed my friends and I didn't have any help with my schoolwork and I felt alone. So as economists, you can sometimes feel like you're shouting into the void, but I like to think that some of the things that I wrote and other commentators wrote did have a role in getting those issues back on the agenda and did help to restart the conversation about getting children back to school. For me, what quality journalism is, is journalism that doesn't serve any agenda, that doesn't serve to reinforce messaging. It's journalism that asks questions that serve society and ask questions about what are the long-term impacts of these decisions that are being made in a moment of crisis.